Okay, so this is Gel OS on the Orange Pi 5, and this is thanks to a comment from Chris Wilson. I've got Gel OS working on all systems on Pi 5, try the latest stable release. Audio, I had to choose default, reboot, and then go back to rock chip HDMI, reboot, then it worked. Now, I'm using uh, a little USB sound card because I want my audio to be separate from the capture device, um, but uh, you can try that tip if you want it to come through your monitor. You can hear that the audio is working on here. Uh, I've already dispatched of some of the enemies because uh, the, the setup controls are so weird on GoldenEye when you use it in RetroArch. Um, there are some Reddit threads to be able to tell you how to do it and set it up in a way that we're more used to it on like PlayStation and Xbox. But uh, just to show you that it's working really, I'll zoom into screen capture. And I better be quick because someone's shooting at me. How far away is he? Yeah, the controls are are really weird. Working fine, just just proper weird. Where's that coming from? And it is a bit laggy. Um, this is one of the harder games. Oh, harder games to play on N64 and emulation. Come on. If I press select and Y, I can go through and I can redefine all those controls. Um, but uh, there are a lot of controls to redefine and uh, I'm going to leave it because most of the other games it works absolutely fine on. So if I go back, so select and Y takes me back into the game, press start and select twice and that will quit out of the game and we can try a few more, so Destruction Derby 64. So Gel OS uses Emulation Station and RetroArch, just the same as RetroPie and uh, various other systems and this seems to have OpenGL support but not Vulkan support but OpenGL on such a powerful device as the Orange Pi 5 is absolutely fine. But this is a game that I've mentioned before, struggles on a Raspberry Pi 4, something to do with some of the effects. The resolution's quite low, but um, but it is playing perfect. Oh, that was unfortunate, wasn't it? And Toy Story 2, always looks nice. Now we can run around and jump around. And you can see it's working fine. I don't know how you fly on this. I'm sure there's like a wings thing. So you can see that was N64. So I've got PlayStation Portable on here. Let's try a bit of God of War. I've got a game save on this just to get past the long intro. So if I press the home button on the Xbox controller, you can see here, load state. So that takes me straight into the game. This is on one times at the moment. I'll mess about with the settings a little bit. But if I press the home button and go into settings, you normally get the option of Vulkan in here, but there is no Vulkan option, so we only have OpenGL. Uh, but let's try the rendering resolution of two times. This is a hard game to run in emulation. Yeah, the audio goes a bit choppy. We, we could definitely do with Vulkan on this. Looks way better though, doesn't it? But becomes not as nice to play. You can do things like turn on uh, frame skipping. So we do like an auto frame skip. Yeah, auto frame skip. So now it will be, I would say, pretty playable. You can see it's giving me warnings about the audio. Although the audio sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, I'd say coping with that pretty well. So let's exit to Gel OS. You see you get a customised menu in here and a bit of Gran Turismo. Getting a bit of choppiness on the audio. Obviously we know the Orange Pie can cope with PSP very well in Android with Vulkan support. Actually I can turn on FPS on this. Show FPS counter. FPS. There we go. So this will run a run at 60 it looks like. I can't get out of the car. Select. Uh, there we go. Yeah, probably probably should have concentrated on the corner. There we go. Okay, so that feels... Although it's a Volkswagen Golf in it, so it's not a fast car. You always get this with Gran Turismo on the early levels, but it definitely could do with speeding up a bit. So let's go into settings and, well, I'll keep frame skip on, although I don't think it will need it at one time with OpenGL support, oh, there you go, so straight away that felt a bit nicer, right, so let's let's get back on track. So we're looking at, what, 
59 FPS. It is reporting that it's on 60 FPS, so that feels alright now. And let's try a bit of Sega Saturn. I haven't done any Sega Saturn for a while. Uh, so Road Rash. Not sure if I need any BIOS for this. No, it doesn't seem to like that. Okay, so I need to do some work on Sega Saturn. Super Nintendo works absolutely fine. I've tried it already. Uh, Wii is, is not going to be good without um, the Vulcan support. Nice to see it launches though. Uh, I could probably set it up with my Dolphin bar like I used in my Wii on Orange Pi 5 video. So we didn't work, it crashed out. Uh, Spectrum's obviously going to work because that's a very low end system. Uh, Amiga haven't tried some of the arcade stuff. Found this game recently, the Cliffhanger. This is such a strange game. It's quite good fun to play. Uh, it is really manic and it's really hard to work out what's going on. But uh, And I like the way the perspective changes every now and then. Like, so we changed, we kind of turned a corner and then all these troops appear. You can swing, I don't know how you do it. I'm not sure what that move's supposed to be. But uh, yeah, I, I'm probably going to revisit this because it, it's good fun. And Dreamcast. So we'll do a bit of Sega GT. And this seems to perform pretty well actually. I was quite impressed with the speed on this. So you can see all the other cars here. Looking pretty decent. It does, it does feel nice and twitchy. A nice sort of arcade style game. Oh, that wasn't good. Not sure what the handling's like on this. Okay, I didn't. Ch I chose grip instead of drift as a mode, but that seems to be working all right. And a bit of dynamite cop. It's coping really well with this. Looks nice and crisp. Running nice and fast, even when there's more people. Let's see if we can get a weapon. Come on, how do we get that? There we go, that'll do some damage. Oh, not to me though. He's hiding down there, come on. Yeah, that's running absolutely fine. Nintendo DS, uh, what have I got on here? Mario Kart DS, let's give that a try. Don't know what's going on on that screen. It's like I'm on the little keypad, but I haven't got anything else. Uh, is there... Screen? Touch mode, joystick, swap screen mode, toggle screen layout, left, right, top, bottom. Let's see if that makes a difference. <laughs> that's much better. Okay. I don't know why that one doesn't work. There we go. That's better. So I've got my right stick is giving me the uh, touchpad. Oh, I'm pressing the B button. Oh, the audio is a bit slow. Okay, no. Nope. Obviously Game Boy's going to work, but let's try a little bit of Tetris. Going to be a lot easier on uh, on such a big screen. Yeah, you can see that's working fine. Yeah, no worries with that. So most things do definitely work. Uh, so Game Boy Advance, I've got to do... Actually, do Donkey Kong Country, because I've done WarioWare recently. There we go, doesn't necessarily look the best on a big screen. Where am I supposed to be going? Oh well, <laughs> that's cool. That's nice and responsive. Can I can I jump over the rocks? I can't. Game Boy Color I've done recently. Game Gear. Oh, but of Streets of Rage. How does this look on Game Gear? Doesn't look too bad. Oh. Oh, the punch isn't good. And where's kick? Don't seem to have a kick. Oh, I've got some way if I press both buttons at the same time. Oh, he missed me then. <laughs> Come on. So GameCube, uh, let's try a bit of Smuggler's Run. And again, lack of Vulcan support is, is not ideal on this. Uh, so you can see hardware and software comes up. Uh, if you go back a bit further in the menus, settings, video, 
and you can see yeah it just has gl well as gl core gl and sdl2 i'm not sure if uh changing it between those will make a difference all the menu and the audio is fine uh the audio is stuttery uh, it's not going to be great on this so at the moment um the more advanced systems are definitely still much better on android because you get uh, vulcan support but this is just an early early version yeah you can see that that's suffering a bit too bad that's not really worth playing at that sort of speed you're better off using android for this sort of thing uh, at this stage obviously as we when we get more support uh, hardware support then we're going to find that they're going to run a lot better uh, Jaguar an old system that I don't usually cover very often but let's go with a bit of checkered flag this is quite a hard to run system as well even though it's so old oh and the controls what are the controls doing the controls and the camera angles are doing something really weird and it looks like it would be running all right speed wise, but yeah, there's something a little messed up with the controls. <laughs> I, can't, I can't control it at all. It's wanting to drag from one side to the other. I'm kind of fighting it, but you could see that it, I would say speed wise, it probably is running reasonably well, but there's something really messed up with the controls. Oh, it's right there's something wrong with the joystick the actual it, it's going left constantly and I don't get that on any other games but you can see that it's it's working as the game would let's jump Oop. yeah so it's working as it should but but uh, yeah there's something I need to redefine the controls which probably I could do in all of this but I'm not going to mess with all of that for now MS DOS uh, so destruction derby not sure if this needs to be installed or if it just runs. I know it's just going to run. Oh, I've got no sound, so I'd need to configure that separately. Oh, it's working now. Didn't really want to be going backwards. How am I going to turn around from there? <laughs> There's too many cars to be able to turn around. Here we are. Let's see if we can spin around. Or if someone knocks me, I'll turn spin around. There we go. God, blimey. I remember when this came out on the PlayStation, it was just incredible at the time. Yeah, well, DOS games, uh, and obviously 3D DOS games, this, was, as I say, was an original PlayStation title. I think one of the launch titles it might have been. But great, great physics, great graphics for the time as well. Not sure if, uh, I'm not sure if I've ever tied, tried TIE Fighter on, on DOSBox. Let's try this one. Move joystick top left and press a button. So I wonder if it's something I've changed that is meaning that my joystick is pulling to one side. Oh, it quit out. Well, it looked like it might have worked though. Maybe you have to install it. Need to have a look at that in the future. And you have a bit of navigation on the screen. If you press the start button, you can see we've got game collection, system settings. Uh, this is how you would set the audio to work. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, you can see updates and so on. But you also have in here as well, if I go into tools, cloud backup and cloud restore for your games. I don't quite know how that works as to how you've got to set that up, if you've got an account or anything. Obviously the details will be on the Jell OS page. Uh, there's a file manager, but I tend to put this SD card into any system running Linux and then add the ROMs to it and I'll show a bit of that in a minute. Run, remove files. 64-bit uh, RetroArch, you can start PPSSPP on its own and uh, this is a graphical adventure system scum. So let's do RetroArch just to show you that that launches independently uh, and then you can use that just as normal RetroArch. Yeah, my controls have gone a bit weird. I It could be that something I was messing about with in RetroArch earlier on has messed up the controls, so maybe things like Jaguar would have worked absolutely fine, um, but uh, I can always reset the controls anyway. So let's show you how to get this. So let's shut down. So I was running JellOS from a 32 gig SD card. Uh, let's show you how to download it. So if you just type in JellOS and go to the GitHub, and you can see on the right hand side it says releases so scroll down and the one I downloaded was uh, this one image.gz uh, you can see 895 megabytes and I can just see that it 
10 hours ago. So this is actually a newer one than I had because I've had it, I'm trying to think, yesterday morning. Uh, so if I click on that, that will download. Uh, and if we have a look to see what the changes are, add support for managing the controller LED, uh, adds initial support for Ether SX2. Oh, so we've got PlayStation 2 emulator and uh, updates to Vulkan as well, which is the thing I've been going on about. So this is a huge update. Okay, so let's download that. Okay, so that's finished downloading. So let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS and scroll down to use custom. You can get Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, Mac OS and also Linux. And this is the Gel OS one from today. Choose storage. This is my 32 gig SD card and hit write and yes. Okay, so that's all finished. So I can remove the SD card from the back of my Raspberry Pi and pop it in my orange Pi. And you just need to boot it for a first time so it creates the folders. Let's transfer all this over, or oh, I better shut this down. So let's plug this in the orange Pi, make sure my controller is on, and Jell OS starts up and it will close down and restart again. In fact, mine restarted twice. So now if we hit start and go to quit, press B and shut down system, and yes. And now I'm gonna plug all this back into my Raspberry Pi, just cause it's what I use for all my file management and everything. You can do all this on the Orange Pi with, uh, with a Linux distribution. So let's plug that in. And I'm gonna let it boot up first of all, and then I'm gonna put the SD card in. So that's enough. Pop that in. Okay, so now if I go down to my USB devices, I've got USB storage here which is the gel os one so i can open that up and i'm going to put that on the right hand side and i've actually got another sd card which has got all my roms on uh, which i was using with gel os before so all the same as it was before so i'm just going to plug that one in and let's open that up and i don't want that partition i want the next partition which is this one so the storage so this is my old SD card on the left hand side and my newly written one with the newest update on the right hand side. Uh, and if I just double click this ROMs folder and do control A to select all of them, I'm just gonna drag all of these into ROMs and it will come up with uh, apply this to existing files and I'm gonna say overwrite. It just saves me copying all the same ROMs in and I've got one PlayStation 2 ROM in there to copy over to give that a try. So this will take a while, so I'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so we're back in, and uh, as you can see, PS2 now shows up on the menu, but if you click on it, it asks for a BIOS, and I haven't put that in yet. Um, but uh, I was gonna just check if PPSSPP detected whether Vulkan was there. And I suppose it could be the particular software that's installed. Let's have a look and see what it does. So settings, OpenGL. Yeah, so we don't have an option for Vulkan in there on PPSSPP, but that's not to say it's not in RetroArch. Obviously this is outside of RetroArch. Uh, so let's quit out of that. And maybe if we go into the RetroArch bit. So settings, video, can't see Vulkan listed there. Okay, so I'm going to have to play around with this a bit more and try and work out how to enable the Vulkan. I'll have a look at the README on the GitHub site, but uh, great work and, and these regular updates are really appreciated. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.